Hey guys, Clade here. Welcome to my Mythic Abyssal Commander Savara kill slash commentary video. For this fight, we are just going to be charging with all of our cooldowns. Our potion is going to be Potion of Unbridled Fury. Talents are going to be Endless Rage, Double Time, Sudden Death, War Paint, Carnage, Dragon Roar, and Siege Breaker. Basically, just a cookie cutter talent setup, but with War Paint. Um, we don't need Bounty Strider for this fight. There's not really too much you're going to hear it'll be leaping for, right? So, the first mechanic right here, I'm actually going to get it right here. Um, basically, with this overflowing chill, all you do is you take it out to the range and you try to drop the circle kind of as far as you can. I just kind of stop there, just make sure that I don't overshoot them. Uh, you want at least two other people soaking it just to be safe. Uh, obviously, the more the merrier, it's split damage. Um, so if you're melee, just take it out to range. Great, drop it off over there, have them deal with it. You know, try to keep melee clear, right? Because there's a lot more space uh, for range to work with. So you guys see the other toxic one on the other side, just drop those as far back as you can. Right here, uh, when he shoots the bolts out, just make sure that try to dodge them as much as you can. I'm actually not sure exactly why I got pushed so far back that time. I don't think I get pushed back that far ever again. Uh, right there is the melee mechanic. That's the javelin. Uh, we count as a melee mechanic. I guess you don't necessarily have to do it. But what we do is we just have a melee. That's the correct color soak it. Um, I think most people are going to do it that way. Basically, the boss will target either a toxic or a frost mark target. But it will target them with the inverse javelin. Um, so you need somebody with the correct color to intercept the javelin and it's easiest with melee because we're literally on the boss And all you have to do after that is some other melee has to come over and just click on your character and grab the javelin off of you As far as the essence and talk about that yet I am using ring 3 blooded enemy and ring 2 essence of the focusing iris That's kind of just my best single target setup I have right now until I get higher ranks of condensed life force as far as we're using cooldowns on this fight I'm just popping them whenever right there isn't really any phase of the fight where you're not DPSing the boss. So literally treat DPSing wise this target as a target dummy for melee. Uh, there shouldn't be any reason where you're not hitting the boss at all. Um, and then as far as with the different marks, right? I have frost. All that means is that I just have to keep moving. You guys see that bar at the top. Um, I, I was thinking that this bar fills up much faster than it did. So I probably could have moved even less than I've been doing. Uh, right? It's just staying at zero right there. And then for the toxic one. Uh, for that one, all you have to do is just stand still as much as you can, right? That bar fills up when you move, and then the frost bar fills up when you don't move. So just the opposite effects. Um, right here, just defending down. There's not really much more, I don't think, for this fight. Um, that's basically it. For some reason, it is kind of a longer fight because I'm pretty sure it's a little bit annoying for ranged and slash cast or DPS. Because if they get the frost one and they have to move uh, very, very frequently, way more than they would like to, uh, I think you are going to be killing the boss a little bit slower, but luckily as melee, we don't really have a restriction whether we're standing still or we're just moving left and right, so no problem there. There's another overwhelm barrage, try to dodge the beams. The easiest way to dodge the little spikes that shoot out is you kind of step back a little bit if you want to be safe, and then you allow you know a couple of spikes to go through, and then you stand where you know the most recent ones go went through. That's the easiest way to dodge it. Um, I actually play this fight like on my priest too, and it's super easy as range. Like you shouldn't ever get hit by spirit range. Uh, I think melee will only get hit if you ever like greedy for DPS. You guys saw right there. I did jump over there to the frost. So if you touch any player, any ground effects, any projectiles, that's of the opposite mark. So either toxic versus frost. Uh, it'll actually clear all of your stacks, but it'll do raid wide damage. So right here, javelin came out. I was gonna soak it, but someone else got in front of me. So perfect, great. Uh, just know that you do uh, end up getting stunned when you get javelin, so you do want people to be breaking out ASAP. And right here, we're just getting a little knockback. Um, DPS in the boss as much as we can. And I think at this point, we're basically know that the boss is dead. There's not really much else. So right there, overflow. Uh, so sometimes when the boss like inverts the targets, it'll actually um, you know root people. So I think it's like a two or three people on each side gets rooted, so that's why I got rooted. Just want to make sure that you know when you're switching sides that you watch out for the people that are rooted. Uh, it's very obvious to see them and just don't step over them. Uh, right there, you guys just I just use all my cooldowns because um, I had to help soak with that guy. But unfortunately, the boss wasn't I wasn't far enough from the boss to charge back in, so I kind of stood in a circle for a little bit, and that definitely does a lot of damage. Right here, I'm kind of walking over there like a little bit slowly um, because. I did know I had A stacks and I did want to clear A stacks, but I wanted to make sure that the raid was generally healed up. Obviously, if everybody's half HP, it's a relatively safe thing to do, especially um, if you don't have that overwhelming thing like with all the spikes coming out. That's basically when the raid takes the most amount of damage is when people are trying to dodge the spikes. So if any time your raid is able to be stabilized and you can try to clear your stack at that time, that's probably the best time for your raid, right? So right here, 3%. Um, I don't think it really does anything else. We just get the boss down.
So it's relatively straightforward boss when you think about it. It's just the dodging of the mechanics. I think really this fight is just how greedy uh, are your DPS in, you know, trying to get, you know, another ounce of DPS in versus trying to back up a little bit. But yeah, unfortunately we got the boots. Obviously we're using a benthic boot, so those boots uh, aren't going to be used. But as always, thanks for checking out the video, guys. Feel free to subscribe to see more. See ya.